Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 25th episode of Disability Discrimination Band Starting Now. I am your host, Lindsay, and in the history of the podcast, I have been very lucky to have a wide variety of guests from college professors, friends, siblings, advocates, and now I can add a CEO to this list. Shelby Perry suffered a severe injury back in uh, in 2021, but despite her disability, she is not letting it stop her. And in fact, she started a company that helps people just like her. And she is joining me in today's episode to share a little bit about her and her company. Welcome to the show, Shelby. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks for having me on today. So can you tell the listeners a little bit more about you? Absolutely. So again, my name is Shelby, and I'm originally from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I moved to Southern California, San Diego, um, a little over three years ago. And yeah, I'm 32 years old now. And during the time I was living out in San Diego, Um, During that year of 2021, I took a group of friends back to Salt Lake City, Utah to go snowboarding. I'm a very avid snowboarder. I grew up doing it in Salt Lake City and um, my whole family does it. I'm just a very active person in general, always have been. I teach yoga, play volleyball, dirt bike, just whatever kind of fun active sports I can do. I've always kind of been into. And so I was just a casual trip home. Um, the snowboarding trip with a group of friends and I ended up getting in an accident on the mountain which caused severe damage to my right eye and so that happened February 28 2021 and they did two surgeries um, pretty immediately after trying to repair the eye and save the eye but then by the time I got back to San Diego and established care out here and had some follow-up appointments, it was determined that they needed to remove the eye completely. So on April 29th, 2021, they completely removed my right eye and that set me on this journey to receive a prosthetic eye, which, you know, I didn't know anybody at the time who had a prosthetic eye or that really was visually impaired. Um, I had, you know, really good vision. I didn't even wear glasses and And so I was just kind of at this moment where I just felt really lost and really scared of like what my future was going to be like and what I would and wouldn't be able to do moving forward. I just, I wasn't sure. So it kind of left open a lot of unknowns for me and a lot of fear around the situation, um, which then prompted me, you know, months later to start searching out a community and to start building iHesive. And at the time when I first set out with iHesive, I just wanted to find a few people that could relate to my story or I could relate to theirs and just find some connection um, that way of other people that had lost an eye or had a prosthetic eye. And I put my story out there on social media and I got other people wanting to share their story. And so I just started sharing blogs. So I was writing my own blogs and then I was sharing a lot of community blogs and I still do those things. And I think at this point we've shared over 200 or sorry, over a hundred blogs of different people that have lost vision in one or both eyes um, from a variety you know, of things from like other types of eye injuries to genetics or something at child or birth or at childhood um, retinoblastoma, ocular melanoma, um, spontaneous retinal tears or just retinal tears in general. So I didn't even know like half these things existed or that was even possible. And so it's just really open. Know half of those stuff. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a big community and we're like so supportive too. So as the community has really grown through the social media I've then implemented a lot of other elements. So I do, um, we've hosted two virtual conferences where we've had like speakers that are in the community, whether they just be other advocates or the ocularist, which are the ones that make the prosthetic eyes or optometrist, um, just talking about vision and health or eye healthcare. And so we've had two big conferences, which have been really fun. And then I do virtual monthly meetups as well for the community. So we just do that once a month. 
um, every month to come together. And then I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with the community as well. So that's been one of the newer additions, but I do really love the the one-on-one -on -one experience and being able to coach people who have lost an eye at any stage of vision loss. And then I sell shirts that say one eye gang, and I've got a bunch of different um, styles of shirts and one eye gang supporter and bookmarks and beanies. So <laughs> there's, there's a slew of merch on there too. Do you, have you heard from any other people in that community that having that community really helps them? All, all the time. Yeah. And that's actually what keeps me going. You know, it's a lot of work to run a community, to keep people engaged, to pump out content that's valuable, to, you know, offer a, just a lot of solutions and options and resources. And then, you know, sharing the stories and doing the blogs, like all of that's been a lot of work. And so every time I get a little message from someone that's just like, this is so helpful, like this has helped me a ton, or I got to, you know, and I try to connect people that have really similar stories. And I just know that there's like an impact happening and I can feel it and people share with me. So that's honestly what keeps me going most days <laughs> even when it's really hard and I want to give in the, give up you know I just don't well that's really good so after your injury how long did it take you to get used to relying on one eye since you went from full vision to now losing an eye yeah it took a couple months for sure and it you know and I felt a steady progression of it getting better and my brain and vision adapting. But, you know, for those first few months, A, I was really tired. I had very low energy. And I think that had a lot to do with my brain trying to adapt. I also, you know, had some double vision, blurry vision, felt really dizzy. Um, and then the, the depth perception, there was a, a big struggle at the beginning of like grabbing things or doing steps. And, um, and I wasn't driving. I didn't drive for almost seven months at the beginning too. So, but by that seventh month period, and I just really starting to like practice those different things and my body and my brain started to really adjust, you know, I started to be able to drive again. And I started to, to do all of the activities, the working out, the yoga um, back, you know, I got a lot of my energy back and I could slowly feel that progression happening from you know, I would say within, you know, I was feeling significantly better within, you know, the first few months. And then by month seven is when I took like a really big turn when I could get back in my car and drive again and feel confident doing that. Everyone's story is a little bit different um, and their process is a little bit different, but that seems to be, you know, a good kind of time range, which is longer than I had anticipated at the beginning. I was like, oh, it's not going to take that long, but it took a lot longer. Yeah, I would. So last season, I actually had a guest on who has somewhat of a from a similar story to you. Not sure if you heard the hep the episode with Vinny Derubius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I listened to that. that. Yeah, yeah, and, and, I, I, and I had um after I saw you, I was like. Okay, this is, um, I want to have her on because now I have two perspectives or two different stories to people who, who can only rely on one eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vinny's shared his story with Ihesiv as well, too, so. Oh, he did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, he submitted it probably. Gosh, when was that? A month or two ago? So I shared I shared his blog not too long ago. I did not know that. I, well, I thought it was really ironic too because you reached out and then I went to your podcast and it was him. I was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> it's a small world. Yeah, but he he is the nicest guy in the world. He's really nice. Um, so what is the I know you had talked about your adjustment period being long what is still what is if you don't mind talking about this what is the hardest thing for you to do now um the hardest thing so it's just it comes down to more of like the mental aspect now like physically I can pretty much do everything and I've like put a lot 
of time and effort and work to get there and a lot of not giving up to get there too. So physically, I feel like I've overcome, you know, and I'm back to where I want to be. It's the mental aspect. So with my appearance and just the prosthetic eye and like navigating um, a normal looking prosthetic eye that matches my real eye was really hard for me and getting one that I was happy with. And then I've transitioned into like the novelty eye. So this one has a star on it. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, so they have fun eyes now. So I have a couple different fun eyes. So that's helped me in the emotional and mental side of just being able to express myself and to feel like I'm not hiding anything or, you know, there's definitely a difference between the natural looking prosthetic eye and your normal eye. And so for me, I'm like, if it's going to be different, I want it to be like really different <laughs> than have people like ask questions, like your eyes are kind of off or, the, you know, cause you know, people like they're curious, but sometimes they'll say things that you're just like, Oh, you know, so with the fun one, it kind of opens up a different conversation and it's more like, that's so cool. Um, and I'd rather have that than like, there's something weird with your eyes because it doesn't move as much. And you can tell there's a little bit of a difference there. So I, um, you know, navigating that situation and just like knowing, you know, the fears that come up around only having one eye. And if something were to happen to my good eye and like, you know, not being so invincible as I once thought I was and just you know, having a different perspective on life too, and just navigating those, those thoughts and not wanting to be like a victim of the situation and persevering through it has been, I think the most challenging, um, in that mental aspect or regard and still is today. And just holding that belief for myself to, that I can still do what I want to do and helping other people get there too. So why do you think this conversation is very important to talk about? I think for a number of reasons. First, you know, my goal is always like, if there's someone out there listening that has a prosthetic eye or a visual impairment, and they're looking for a community, I want them to know that one exists and we're here for you. And you can come find us on iHesive. And if you want to share your story, I'd love to share your story. Um, and I really think it's been such a healing experience for me to share these stories and read these stories. And so I think for other people, like as they read other stories that they can relate to, it is like healing to know that you're not alone and just to get that additional support from the community. So that's always, you know, a great mission that I have is just like building the community and like connecting people and building the um, yeah, connecting people. <laughs> so that's why I want to have these conversations. Also bringing awareness um, to, to the idea of, you know, prosthetic eyes and people that have visual impairment, which is like, you know, a range. It's a very, like it's a scale and it's a very large range. And I think we think like, okay, blind people that are completely blind, you know, all, and that's kind of where it stops. But also, you know, where, there's just the scale a visual impairment too. So just like opening that conversation, that door, the openness to understanding that there's a lot of different ranges in a visual impairment or having lack of visions in one or both eyes. And then, um, yeah, the community bringing the awareness and also just, you know, Another big thing that is just like, no matter what you go through, I think you can come out onto the other end and just really finding like your gift, your story as your journey and sharing that with other people, no matter what that might be. Um, and it, 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 literally anything, <laughs> sharing that with people. So can you tell us a little bit about Aisa? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, it's like cohesive, like sticking together, but adhesive. So U I E, yeah. I H like that. Thanks. So yeah, like I said, it just started as that community platform. I was just looking for other people to connect with that had a similar story. Um, and then since then, like I said, we've had the two conferences. I do the coaching. We do virtual monthly meetups. 
Um, I, you know, post a lot of different content on the social media and through email marketing that just, and all my thought always is just like, how can I help one person today? So the content that I tried to share just really is like things that have either helped me or ways that I've helped my coaching clients, like overcome something or to have a new perspective on something, or just in some way, give someone's life, like a little bit of value through their social media feed. Um, so that's it. And I have a lot of ideas for IHESIB, like moving forward. I would love to do like an in-person conference where we all get to come together in person. And I just see a lot of growth within, within IHESIB and the community too. Well, I think, I think I, IHESIB is the type of platform that I wish existed everywhere. Thank you. Um, cause I found that starting this podcast, like aside from my friends and my professors that I know, I've never realized like how many more people, like you and I don't have the same thing, obviously, but you, you understand the frustration that I feel at mm -hmm. times so we might not have the same disability but you understand yeah. what that mental aspect what how hard it is at times totally and yeah that's why I know it's so valuable to talk to someone that can relate and of course no two stories are ever the same and they're going to look different from the outside but the feelings are what we're trying to you know come to so it's like can I connect, have similar connected feelings to someone? That's our starting point, you know, from the experiences we've had. So obviously we know that there is discrimination in the world, unfortunately. What would you say to someone in the, uh, who doesn't view someone who doesn't have like, eye vision or had an eye removed as equal to them does that make sense yeah so you're just to clarify so if someone mm -hmm. thinks that I'm less than or not equal to them because I have one eye yeah a limitation uh, yeah or a limitation okay um and what what how do I want to educate them what what would you say to them yeah, so I mean, I think this, yeah, conversation obviously has a lot and a lot this of. This is a very broad conversation. <laughs> a broad conversation, and everyone, you know, always has like different perspectives. But I really believe that, you know, anyone can do like anything that they want. I also believe that we all are very unique and different, and we have things that we need that are going to help us to succeed in the world. Um, I don't think anyone should ever look down on or limit that person because of like the extra needs that they need. Um, you know, so I'm a very like, like everyone's equal and can we like all get along and like love on one another and support one another and serve one another. Like my whole base is, like I said, I just care about helping like one person at minimum um, every day. And so I'm always just like, can I, how can I serve people too? And whatever they're going through and like, however their, um, disability is to them. And like, I just want to like show up and be like that loving, like supportive listener to them too. So, and I just wish that everybody was like that. Exactly. <laughs> so I, and again, I just try to lead by example too. So if I can put that out in the world, like hopefully others that maybe don't have that perspective could see something and maybe have a little change in perspective. <laughs> so what would you say to someone that that has lost an eye or lost their vision? Yeah, so I would say like definitely it um First, you know, get a community like, like we were talking. It's so important to have those people you can relate to. It'll help immensely in your healing journey. I would also say like to obviously take care of your body and rest. Well, I say obviously, but that's also really hard sometimes, especially when we're, it's a sudden vision loss and we're used to go, go, go or living our life and having our independence. And all of a sudden it's been derailed or something's 
you know, it's not the same. And so, you know, if you're at the beginning of your eye loss or eye injury stage, like I always say, just rest as much as you can really take that time to allow your body your brain, your emotions, everything to heal um, through rest. And then I would, you know, definitely have the community. And then the third thing is just you know, work with someone, either a therapist, a coach, or just a mentor to help like overcome some of those really tough obstacles to help you build confidence, to find that self-love again, to get power back in your life. And then definitely like, I think sharing your story, I know it can be scary, but, and it doesn't have to be on like, you know, all the social media platforms, but just sharing your story with like close ones or loved ones, um, there's a healing in that immense healing and being able to share your story too. What do you hope people will take away from this conversation? I hope people will find community, you know, wherever they need it. Um, ask for help. I think that's a huge thing too. We always try to do everything ourselves, which is great. But if you're in a place where you need a little additional help, um, don't be afraid to ask for that help, especially right after an eye injury. Um, you know, and I, you know, I hope <laughs> that your loved ones, you know, or our community is there to like help you along the way. And then, um, just the awareness portion, you know, of like anyone that's out there that might be like suffering with an eye injury or vision loss that hasn't found a community, you know, come find a community, people that, haven't experienced that yet, but just know that we're out there and that we exist. And, you know, I'm always like, protect your eyes. You know, I don't like to be too much online, like, because I just know things can happen. And none of the reason we lose eyes is because like, you know, we did it. We just didn't think that that would happen. So, um, you know, my eyes, I did have protection on them and stuff, but um, if you like in the workplace or using heavy machinery or equipment definitely make sure you're protecting your eyes and um yeah those are the top three things I think the the community asking for help and just protecting yourself yeah I like the asking for help because I know some people might not like asking for help like me so I'm like <laughs> let me do it first <laughs> Then if I'm frustrated, I'll, I'll ask for mm -hmm. help. Yeah. But, um, and then if someone came up to you with, um, like noticing your eye, would you open up about your story? Yeah, I'm, them? I'm pretty open. Um, definitely. So in depth depending on the day, you know, I will either give a really short, <laughs> you know, response, or if it's someone and I'm feeling, you know, comfortable with them, then I'll like go more into depth too. And, you know, and I coach people in the same spot and I'm always like, you get to decide how much or how little you share. And I think it is important to have, especially for children that are going through this, um, you know, one or two sentences of like their story that they feel comfortable and confident, like sharing. And so if people do ask them, they can share, this is what happened to my eye, or this is what's going on with my eyes. And they, you know, feel really comfortable or they can decline, you know, and be like, I don't want to share today. Um, but for me, I, yeah, I have those like one or two sentences of like my really short description. That's just like, you know, more of the basic um, situation that I can give out to anybody, or if I feel more comfortable, then I can go into more depth. Yeah, and I've said multiple times in this pod, like podcast, that I encourage people to to try and edu try and educate themselves, mm -hmm. and um, because initially that's what that's what we have to do we have to educate I have to um as I mentioned all the all the guests I have had I love coming um having y'all come on because even from my parents from my friends they said Lindsay we loved we loved hearing Vinny we loved hearing from a beacon professor mm -hmm. like every 
if we speak up, people will listen. Mm -hmm. We just have to be comfortable, but not every person is comfortable opening up. So if everyone, if you talk to a person that says, I like, I don't really want to go into my eye issue or my disability, don't take offense to it. It's mm -hmm. just, they're not comfortable. And with me, I'm in my little shell around my disability and I'm slowly but surely starting to open up on here. Yeah. But I only tell the most, the people I really trust the most, what's actually happening or yeah. what I have. Yeah. And you're so right. Like, it's really hard at first, you know, but it gets a little bit easier the more we do it and the more we kind of show up. And I think it's important to ask ourselves questions like what like what do I want to share who do I want to be you know how do I want to embrace this and like everyone's going to have such a different experience um level and com comfort level but I think it starts with just asking ourselves the questions like what do I want you know <laughs> like how do I want to to express this or talk about this and I I get to be in control and decide and share what I want but as I do it I get more and more comfortable and then all of a sudden I'm kind of like sharing a little bit more or sharing in a different way so so you had mentioned you do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people who have the eye limitation can you go do you mind explaining what you do when you meet with them yeah absolutely so it just ranges a teeny bit depending on the their needs. So if someone just barely lost their eye, their eye or just had an eye injury, then their needs might be a little bit different than someone that lost their eye 20 years ago, but just hasn't fully either grieved or accepted or it's held them back in areas. So just depending on where they're at and what their needs are, but the basis of what we go through, and it's a five month coaching program or container and we meet once a week over over zoom sorry and um the basis is just really building that support network and being able to communicate our needs to them because we can have a lot of support but if we're not able to open up and talk and communicate what we need then we're not taking it full advantage or really serving ourselves and and our community the best so kind of into that realm and then the physical aspect too I always see where people are at physically and where they want to be because if they've lost a lot of their physical being and it's stuff that we can work towards getting back um, you know I definitely want to be setting goals and working towards going back to the gym a few times a week or going on some walks or whatever it may be um, so getting into that routine and then definitely like the self-love and daily routine kind of feeds into that too. And I'm really big advocator on just enjoying like every single day and despite what we're going through, like having a, the best day ever, like and, and creating like this really purposeful and meaningful life. So setting goals, fulfilling the goals, um, striving towards you know, again, that purpose, that gift that you have and those goals and fulfilling them and then just building a lot of confidence along the way and just having like complete power back into, into our lives. Cause I feel like we lose some of that during the way <laughs> we just all do. So how can we get that back? You know? Yeah. And I've actually switched a few questions than what I, uh, than what I sent you. So I realized I repeated my myself in front of and in, in some of them. Oh, that's okay. So, so what um so obviously every day there's there's a person, there's a family that finds out the person can't see or their eye has to be removed altogether. Mm -hmm. what what would you say to the family that um that is kind of needing to accommodate around helping the person 
Yeah. So for families, it's definitely, and it depends on if they're a child or an adult, they'll need a little bit different. Um, the people will, but the families, I think for sure should find a community as well. So, and, and I do a lot, you know, I've got supporters and family members of the one I gang, like in the community too. So IHESIV is a great place to build connections with other mothers or significant others or spouses. And so um, having community and then you're never going to like fully understand like we were talking about or fully be able to relate um, because you haven't gone through that. But, you know, we just have to show up best we can um, and love and support and service. And so as like a caretaker or a family member, just continuing to show up and obviously love and support and then reach out to a community that has been through that and see what helps as well too. Cause like having those connections um, helps along the, the journey. And then I definitely think like what helped me if we want to go that route, it's like, I couldn't drive. So definitely having people to drive me around, take me to appointments, grocery shop for me, make sure that there was like plenty of ice cream at the house, you know, and just doing my laundry, you know, and that was really hard for me. And it was hard for me to ask. So a lot of my family just kind of started doing it for me, you know, and then I, it did teach me how to ask for help as well too. Um, so doing that and then, you know, just asking like, what can I do to help you? Like, can I do these things? Like, how can I help you? I take you to your doctor's appointment. Um, and then, you know, obviously helping the, the person, some that lost vision, um, or is going through the process, like help them find a way to a community as well too. Yeah. And, uh, one thing I would say too, is like check in on them to make yeah. sure their mental, like yeah. you, you said when you had the injury that, that you had to, you had to mentally like come around it, or I don't, I don't know how to say that, but, um, People in general will not tell you when they're struggling or when, um, like there was a point in time, I'm now seeking out help, but there was a time I didn't want to tell someone, okay, I'm like, I'm having this issue. And so to the families, really make sure your person or your sibling, your friend, or anyone is doing okay because they're, 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 oh, I lost the word. No, I completely they're, understand. They're going through a big change in their life that, that is probably really challenging than, uh, to get used to if they had full vision until then am I right yeah yeah definitely I love you know asking and checking in not just what they need exterior exteriorly on the outside but what they need on the inside and how they're doing with their thoughts and I think another important thing just because I had this a lot um was just like people kind of giving comments of like you know like you're healing so well. I can't believe you're taking this so well. And I know that they're like mean well by those things or like, this is how I would heal or this is how I would have taken it or this is how um, like I would have done X, Y, and Z. And it's just like, well, you don't really know because you haven't been through that and you're not going to know until you've been through it. And even if you've been through it, it's going to be a little bit different. So I know people like mean well, but sometimes just thinking about the comments that they're making, um, even if it's, from the best intentions, like, okay, how I don't, I don't really know because I haven't been through there, you know, or been in, in her exact spot. So instead I'm just going to ask how she's doing. How can I help? Like, what can I do for you? And so, <laughs> any other side comments that might <laughs> come off, you know, not so great. Yeah. And this last question, I really do love ask, asking to hear the answer. What do you say to your younger self? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see. This is a good one. Yeah, I love this question too. 
So to my younger self, it would just be, I feel like it's like so cliche or cheesy, but just pretty much like you're going to be okay. Um, even as a child, I, you know, thought that <laughs> like everything had to be done and done right and kind of perfect and needed to do all the things, you know, and like, so I think, you know, partly when this experience happened to me, it really caused this motion to like slow down and to just like lean into myself and to trust myself and to know that everything's going to be okay. Um, so I think that's kind of what, you know, I would tell my younger self, like, no matter what, everything is going to be okay. And I have to keep telling my future self that I think too. <laughs> So is there anything else you would want to say to the listeners? Um, yeah, I just want to, you know, say thank you again for really having me on in this discussion today. And if you're a one eye gang or you've lost vision and it, one or both eyes and some of the people in the community don't wear prosthetic eyes, they're blind in one eye and um, they just don't need a prosthetic eye. You know, you're welcome as well too. You know, everyone's welcome and the supporters are welcome. Um, so you can find us at Ihesive and really kind of dive into the community. And if you need additional support or research resources, don't hesitate to reach out, you know, and ask for that help. Um, so definitely just, you know, I want to reach out to anyone that, you know, could want to be in the community to come find us. And then, um, just the, I, I can add your website link into the okay. description. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the other thing would be just, you know, again, asking for help and, you know, being of love and support and service, not just to other people, but like to yourself too. Sometimes I have to slow down enough and be like, okay, how can I be of love and support and service to myself today? Is that resting? Is that, you know, really getting out there and doing something and moving my body? Is that taking a lot of action? Is that just chilling? You know, whatever it is, reading a book, can I be loving and in, in my thoughts too, you know, like how can I create loving serving thoughts for myself? Well, Shelby, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the podcast. And everyone, I hope you enjoyed hearing from Shelby. Um, and like she said, if you're if you're dealing with an eye issue and needs a community to go to, then go to uh I'll include her link in the description, but go to Hyesiv and see and contact Shelby so she can help you in any way she can. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.